Hey, what's up, fellas? Tonight, we're going to be putting this burner to the test. I want to see how long it takes this thing to melt one kilogram of brass. Now, we've seen this thing the other night. This is the concrete jet engine, basically. It has a refractory line combustion can in there made out of some good refractory uh, cement. And we're going to be using it in the foundry furnace. So this is kind of what this thing looks like when it's not in the furnace. This is what we got here. That is one of my old furnaces. I had to cut the front off of this thing. You guys that have been watching my channel have seen this thing a hundred times. So there's just over one kilogram in there. I think it's 1,088 grams or something like that. And this is just some old brass spare parts and a couple of brass pyramids that I have. So I was not able to get this thing up to full power, unfortunately, because it turned into a volcano, essentially, when you turned everything up all the way. But I did get it real close. And as far as the max power is concerned, we have a very small blower on this thing. If we look at a bigger blower up to this, we can probably see a drastic performance increase. It's actually one of the smallest leaf blowers they sell. So, I'm just doing some adjusting here, making sure we're going directly into the intake of that furnace. And the performance of this thing is phenomenal. Uh, basically, I ended up melting this one thing in eight minutes. So, my current record with the Godzilla is about 11 minutes. So, it is an improvement, but we're burning a lot more fuel. This thing is screaming. We've actually turned the furnace into a jet engine itself. And the um, jet engine that we're running this thing on is just acting like a pre-burner. So there's so much power going into this thing that the furnace itself has become part of the engine. And you can see there it's kind of shooting out some red hot pieces of refractory. There's just little bits. There's one right there. It's literally starting to vitrify some of the loose pieces of refractory and shoot it out. Which means we're hitting 2400 degrees a minimum there. So I did have to turn it down because I didn't put this thing in a very good spot for this test. I wasn't expecting lava, but we did get a little bit. So I turned it down. Uh, I'd probably say we're right around 75% power output on this burner. This right here is about 7 psi. No, this is only 4 psi. I've had this thing running as high as 10 psi, so we were really not able to put that much power into this furnace. You can see there we weren't quite turned all the way up on air due to the lava, I guess you could say. So, nonetheless, I realized I kind of dragged this footage out. Um, what we see here is a uh, quick little exposure change to see if we can observe whether or not it's melting yet. It's just about there. A couple little chunks left inside of there when I felt it the first time, but I felt like by the time I got this thing poured, it would have melted them. The radiation coming off of this thing is super intense. So you can kind of tell by the color that we're in the 2500 degree range. But um, at least that's what I was seeing when I was doing the actual pour. You can't use the camera to make that call, of course, but I'm just kind of doing this ad lib. I don't have a script or nothing here, guys. I'm just narrating what I'm looking at. I'm watching the video with you without keeping my mouth shut. Kind of like uh, Science Theater 3000. Is that the name of that show? I know we were hitting over 2400 because this section was not vitrified when we started. We have vitrification in several locations here. All through right there is vitrified. So that means we exceeded 2400 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so this is our brass pyramid. I forget what this is called. What is a pyramid called? Is it a dectahodron? Whatever. So I weighed out our losses. In that eight minute run, we lost 19 grams of brass some of it's still you know stuck in there you clearly see some stuck right there so there's minor loss I, don't, I do not expect people to start smelting with a burner that big but 
Just wanted to see what that thing could do. I could not turn the air pressure up any higher. We were starting to lose furnace. I had white hot pieces of refractory melting out of the side shooting out at me. And here's a look at some of that crucible heat shield that I had made a while back. The problem with it is when it gets hot, it turns into an oxide that is very reactive with water, which then turns into another chemical that has 75% more volume and it fluffs up and just falls off into a powder. That's what this will do eventually. So it turned out not to be something that can be used very well more than once. It works great on a first application. All right, so my previous record was held by this old Godzilla burner. This is one of my old Godzilla with preheat. But this is a very old version. I've since bored out these nozzles to where they breathe a little bit better. So I might be able to shave off a couple more minutes. I'm gonna have to revisit, we might have to do a rematch here. But um, this machine here, gave us an 11 minute melt time for that same kilogram of brass and i did use a substantial air compressor to pull that off though we were at about 110 psi's i think or something like that but if i bore this thing out we can run this thing at 135 psi's and get a substantial performance increase i think that's about as much air as i can get into this thing but at the end of the day the concrete jet engine would still probably outdo the godzilla because it's just so ferocious. It just puts so much fuel and air through it. 